Hello everyone, and welcome to Shooting the Shit with Johnny and Smith. I'm Johnny. And I'm Smith, and today we're talking about Days Gone. Days Gone is uh, a PlayStation exclusive. It is a zombie game, zombie open world game, where you play as a biker named Deacon St. John, trying to survive in the zombie apocalypse. Um, I have played right around, I would say, probably about 35-ish hours. I haven't beat it yet. I believe I'm right at the end. Smith, how much time you got under your belt? I know you haven't played quite as much as I have. Yeah, I've got about the 15, 20 hour mark. That's all right. You've seen not a ton changes in that uh, that time. Um, just a new area opens up. So uh, first thing I want to ask is, you know, what is uh, what is your favorite thing about Days Gone? Zombie hordes. Don't even have to think about it. That's, uh, yeah. That's pretty much what I feel like everyone is going to say. I, I agree with that as well. I do have another thing, an honorable mention. But yeah, let's start there. The uh, zombie hordes in this game, they are they're intense, especially early on. If you run into a horde early on, bye-bye, pretty much. If you're not running, you're dead. They're an you're actual dead. threat. And if you're running, dude, you've got no stamina to run away. Unless your bike is right next to you when you see the horde, you're dead. You're exactly. You If you don't have your bike, you're not escaping the horde. So... The first actual horde that I ran into, I believe was actually the same horde you ran into because you told me about it when we were doing this Nero checkpoint. There was this, he was like, man, there's this horde in the train. And I'm like, what train are you talking about? And I'm sitting here doing the Nero checkpoint, which <laughs> is, uh, it's an optional thing. But when you turn the power back on to open the Nero checkpoint, these these alarms go off. They like horns, it's like meh, meh, meh. So I do that. Horde comes out of the train. I'm, I'm annihilated. There's just no way I could beat them. Smith had a somewhat similar experience with the Horde there, from what I recall. I was stuck in a trash can for 25 minutes. That's dude. right. Yeah. He did not have nearly as much luck as I did. He, uh, I think you actually had to end up reloading the game. You were just, you were, because we didn't have anything. We were, I think we had done two or three story missions at that point. We were, we yeah, had this nothing. This is just the first, first introduction to a free roam event. I'm like, oh, what? I'm gonna come and find out what's over here. Maybe I get a new gun or something. All I got was a face full of pain. It was, and it's it's such a small. It was like a clown car, but a train, just mm -hmm. coming out of the end like a fucking waterfall. It was crazy, dude. They just chased you down. I hit in the trash can. They were standing and beating on the track like they were. They knew I was there. They didn't suddenly not see me. Yeah, they knew I was there. To leave, so I was either reload or get out and die. So yeah, reloaded. Yeah, these things. Times. Yeah, exactly. These these uh they're called freakers in this, but I mean you're probably just gonna end up calling them zombies anyways. They're not. I, I don't want to call them like smart, but they do have that like horde mentality where like they will work as a group to overrun you. That's something that's uh, pretty interesting about this game. It doesn't always happen like that. Um, and you can, if you have the bike or you have high enough stamina, which you can level up your stamina, HP, and. Uh, your focus shot, which is basically slow down shot, uh, by doing those Nero checkpoints, which is why uh, we were doing the Nero checkpoints. But if you, you can split them up. You can get it so it's like five or six, and then the rest heads back home. But they're still pretty freaking tough to deal with. And I think there's probably, oh gosh, I don't know, 25, 30 hordes in the game, I want to say. Unless unless another area more. opens up. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I love the way that, you know, it's, it's typically in these kind of games, you know, the daytime and that, but when you go into the caves during the daytime, that's where the hordes reside. They always hide somewhere. So you've got the train or the caves or somewhere. Oh, yeah. And, and when you, when you, as soon as you go in, it's like, that's it. It's just like, I just, I was scared to enter anywhere, dude. It's, and it's so dark. The only way yes, for you to yes. see, the game has a flashlight, thankfully, since so many games these days decide flashlight is taboo, but it has a flashlight, but by the time you turn it on and turn the corner, it's like, oh, yeah, I just woke them up. Here they come. So yep, you got to book it. it. You did. Yep. And, uh, especially early on, your guns are not good. Your stamina is not good. Your HP is not good. I mean, the weapons early on are like pipe weapons from Fallout, man. They're pretty garbage. They're, they're bad. I think I use the, uh, the shotgun because I prefer the close range stuff. Um, but like the AK is the first assault rifle. And that's one thing, like, the hordes are great, the gunplay, not so much. It's, uh, it's rough. There's a lot of, um, it has that... It's just it's so inaccurate. Yeah, it, it has that thing where you, like, it overcompensates with the zoom when you aim down sights, just, just normally. And 
when it does that and a zombie's right next to you, you just, unless your sensitivity is way up, you don't have enough time to shift and shoot it before it hits you. And I don't really like that, but it is, it's clunky is the word I would say. It's like a half finished version of GTA's lock on shooting. Yeah, because there is no There's, lock on. Sometimes it's, it drags and it's got that sticky mm -hmm. aim to it, but then it just loses the sticky aim and you're shooting at nothing. I mean, the shots are impactful. I did feel like when I was actually able to hit something, it felt good. But yeah. the accuracy, especially at range, accuracy was not reliable enough to make it fun and exciting every time. No. Um, so there was another thing I want to talk about that I liked that was kind of an honorable mention. You didn't really have as much success as I did with this, but I would like... Uh, you can use a crossbow. You don't have to use a crossbow. And, uh, oh, this lovely footage is me trying to take out that horde in the train by throwing a, <laughs> by throwing a gas can in there. It backfired almost immediately. This is normally how they go, and then I just run. But uh, you see me trying to use the crossbow there. That's that's a normal crossbow bolt. That's pretty much terrible. But they have these. They remind me of the Berserker darts from Black Flag, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. You can shoot enemies with it, and they will shoot their allies as well. That doesn't mean that they're your ally. So if you shoot them with it and they see you, they'll still shoot you. Um, it only work. I it actually does work on freakers. I don't know what the point would be. I guess you could have freakers fight each other. It works really well on humans and uh, they will kill each other in the camp because there are, outside of zombies, of course, there are rogue humans um, and these gangs roaming the area and they have they have uh, compounds scattered throughout the uh, game world. And you can take these. Um, normally they'll have around, what, eight to 12 people, something like that, that you gotta take out. It's not terrible. Um, but I use a few bigger ones, yeah. But it's, it's generally, I, I enjoyed those parts of the game, to be honest. That was because you have a lot more option for stealth when you're against humans. Yeah, you do. And they make a lot of noise. And there's been a couple of times where, like, there's not necessarily a horde, but there's a group of uh, the swarmers moving around, and then they just get into it. And all of a sudden, you're fighting them and the humans. And if you have the uh, berserk dart, I can't exactly remember what it's called, that it makes them turn on each other. You've got these AI computer uh, gang members shooting at each other while the horde comes in and just takes most of them out. And it's just like, perfect, thank you. And then after that, you find there, every one of these people has a bunker, as it turns out, because every time Deacon's like, they gotta have a bunker around here somewhere. And it's like, okay, dude, really? I don't know if that would be my first instinct to look for, but sure, we'll go with that. Um, and then inside these bunkers, you do get crafting recipes. How do you feel about the crafting in the game? Um, user interface wise, I thought it was fantastic. Okay. You know, the fact that you could, I could just be running, you know, I could switch, quickly scroll through, make a bowl, a med kit, you know, because obviously it slows down time when you're accessing the inventory, but yes. you're still moving. Yes, it does. So it sort of gives you that little breathing space where you can just have a look at this horde that's about to eat you alive before mm -hmm. you make your pipe bomb and miss. Yes. But, I mean, it was just, it was unimaginative. It was, it was very boring. There's, you know, it was just, yeah. there's just nothing to it. There's really not a ton, like even, I'm a lot deeper than you, so I have a lot more recipes, but even then it's like I have, there are me melee weapons, we should mention that as well. And that's actually what I use most of the time until I got an actual decent assault rifle. I, I would use my uh, baseball bat with nails, baseball bat with saw blade, baseball bat with, I don't know, these iron uh, pieces of scrap attached to it to make it stronger. And that's a lot of what the crafting recipes are, is improving either like a bat or a two by four, something like that. Um, there are a few like yeah, Molotovs, obviously that's that's useful. And you can craft explosives way later in the game, but early on it's pretty much uh, outside of health kits really. That's health kits and Molotovs. Molotovs and baseball bats, yeah. I yeah. Mean, the, the melee combat, I did enjoy the melee combat. I thought it was way better than the, the range combat, the gun, the gun play, but... Yeah. Because you've got the you've got the certain zombies again just just randomly in combat they'll they'll dodge they'll swim back as you swing forward mm -hmm. and they'll counter you unless you counter their counter. Pretty simple stuff. It was quite easy. It was quite intuitive, but it was just it just added a bit more, a, bit, a level of complexity needed to enjoy it over and over again. So you weren't just smashing them in the head every single time. There was a bit of a challenge involved sometimes, and I did enjoy that. Yeah, the melee combat worked pretty well. It is kind of almost like that sticky melee combat where you. You don't really have to aim. You will still hit pretty well. Uh, it's like you said, they can dodge and you can dodge as well, but your dodge obviously takes stamina. And if you're out of stamina, you can't dodge. 
Um, funny enough though, your melee attacks do not take stamina, which I appreciate because a lot, like I said, it's just a lot more reliable than a gun unless you have some of the later game guns or, you know, find like an LMG or something and you just don't care about being quiet anymore. You can unload with that. That works pretty well too. Um, I don't, I think they could have added more melee weapons personally, even now, like I'm double your time and I'm still pretty much just using the baseball bat. Cause it's just so much better that, cause you can, you can modify it. You can't really modify anything else, uh, except like a two by four and a wooden, if it's made of wood, you can add nails and stuff like that, but there's not. Yeah, for the, for the, for the setting of the game, the whole post apocalyptic world, the idea is to be able to adapt to survive, right? Mm -hmm. So. You've got your baseball bat, you throw the nails in it, you put the saw blade in it. It's all a bit unrealistic, but it works. Yeah. And then, you know, where's the guitar that I can pick up or a sword <laughs> I find in some dude's house? Just in a trash can, something just to make it a bit more, you know, adapt on the spot. But again, I was the same as you. It's, I was like, I could never find a bloody baseball bat. When I did, it was just baseball bat, baseball bat, baseball bat. Exactly. I, I yeah, and it, it works so well that it's just why not at that point it doesn't really encourage you to experiment too much because you can get a perk that actually we should talk about this actually the weapons do have durability which makes sense for like a wooden baseball bat it is going to break down after a while anything made of wood will break down after a while but i had like a fire axe and i feel like some items should have more durability than others let's just say that but they all pretty much have about the same durability uh, you can get perks to improve it things like that um I'm, it's not too difficult to keep repaired, though, is it? You no. Know, once you just got the swing of it, it's quite easy to keep one for a long period of time. You you do need to have that uh, that perk to repair it is the only issue. And finding uh, scrap in the game is not difficult. You can find it in most cars. The real difficulty attached to it is that you cannot hold like any crafting materials. It's nuts. Like I think you can hold ten scrap metal to begin with. You hold like three molotovs. Most crafting items you can only hold five of, and I think actually just last night I finally got the perk where I could hold double my crafting materials. Yeah, I saw that at tier three, and I must admit that that was very much just I, I don't know if I've got the patience to be bothered to get there, you know, because if, if I've run around and I've seen 25 Molotov cocktails worth of ingredients, I should be able to pick up at least most of them instead of only being able to have three in my hand and a couple that I can craft up. You know, it felt really frustrating because it, it's just, it's dumb. You know, there's what, maybe five, ten different materials? There's not like a big selection of materials. No, the, as you as you get more recipes, materials do unlock, like a saw blade for the saw bat, for instance. Um, but again, it's not like, it's like you said, there's not a ton of materials. And when the saw blades get added or the alarm clock for like the distracting toy and stuff like that, they, they're pretty much... I feel like they were there before they were just invisible to you. Like you just couldn't see them without the skill basically is what was uh, going yeah, on there. Yeah. And that's where I, I actually have a pretty big issue, issue with this because I like to explore. Finding a horde is fine, but a lot of the times when you explore in this game, it leads to crafting materials and that's not, that's not useful because you can't hold very much of it. Uh, every now and then you'll luck out and you'll find, let's say you have a level one pistol, you'll find a level two pistol. Or in my case, you'll find a level two sniper rifle everywhere because you don't use sniper rifles. Um, and it, it would, right? You right. got a horde coming at you on a single shotgun. And, that's the way to go. Yeah, and they're so loud. It's like, I, And that's the thing. The sniper rifle takes the spot of your crossbow. So it's like, I'm not... Yeah, it's got more range. And yes, you can get silencers for all your guns, but they break. Goodness, they break quick. Well, fast. Yeah, uh, pistol ones last a decent amount of time. I used one with a sniper rifle, and I think I got about 10-ish shots off before it broke. And then uh, assault rifle, I don't know. I pretty much lose track of how, how much ammo I'm using in that. But you can get those. You can either buy them from camps, or you can sometimes find them in cars. There was a tutorial like, yeah, you can find them in cars. And then from there, you pretty much never, never find, find one. <laughs> yeah, you never find them in cars. It's just like, oh, okay, sure. Um, so the gunplay is kind of eh, without the focus shot especially it's kind of eh, but the melee I can deal with the melee there are a lot of explosives and uh, tools that you can use to help you with the horde outside of molotovs you can have pipe bombs normal frag grenades proximity bombs 
this thing they call a distractor, which basically is exactly what it sounds like. You just attach an alarm clock to a toy and you throw it out and it's just me, 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 me. And all the uh, enemies, the hordes especially, will like go right on top of it. And you can attach a bomb to that as well. That's a pretty late recipe. But there are plenty of explosives and toys for you to play around with outside of guns. And that's mostly what I would use in a lot of instances was just the tools instead of the guns until I until I knew that they were just gonna run at me and I could focus shot all of them down. Cause even some of the human AI will do that. Um, especially what they call, they're, they're called the Rippers. Um, they are basically a bunch of melee dudes on PCP and they just charge you. So just aim down sight, pop, 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 pop. Um, but you need that focus shot and you need to shoot in controlled bursts or else it's just inaccurate. Like you can't just hold it down, so. Uh, Another big, 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 big thing in this game is the is the bike. You are a biker, and getting around in this world, you use what is called the drifter bike because you can drift, uh, which is, uh, it's silly, but it, it works, it's fine. Early on, the bike is not very good. Um, you can upgrade it as you go. Well, how'd you feel about the bike in the game, especially early on? Because I'm at a point where I really do enjoy the bike, but I have almost every upgrade at this point. Oh, I was really disappointed with the bike. You know, when you, when you look at something like Red Dead, it, you know, it's a bit of a strange comparison. But the, the it's relationship not. you have it's with not. your horse in that is, is it's it's part of the experience, yeah. right? Yes, exactly. I think I think at times Red Dead went a bit too far. So, for example, the the fuel of the bike. You know, you run out of fuel, you're stuck. That oh, could, oh, you mean days to... Days Gone went a bit too far? Yes, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. No, no. I think I think I think Red Dead went too far, but Days Gone is they've, they've changed it up so that. You've got the fuel, okay. you run out of fuel, it's an issue, but it puts the fuel on the map for you. So it kind of, it takes away from the, the realism of it in favor of a positive gameplay mechanic. So you're not just running around the woods looking for a fuel can. See, you know I, what I mean? I, yeah, I haven't run out of gas, so I don't, I didn't know that that happened. Um, I, I, yeah, once you get down to about sort of 10, 20 percent mark, you just see fuel cans all over the screen. Interesting. See, I didn't know that. Okay. Um, so whereas I feel, I feel Red Dead was a bit too much, you know, like... Red Dead wouldn't have told you where the fuel was. They would have just needed the horses there. It's stuck. You need to fix it and get it done. So I think they made they made some good choices, but you know you, you sacrifice the immersion for the gameplay mechanic there because I'm not really scared about losing fuel. I'll just find someone on the side of the road. So the bike was just it's just a form of faster travel. I didn't really feel any connection there. There was no necessity to it. Yeah, I don't know. And and the driving was it reminded me of Ubisoft, dude. The driving was not good. <laughs> that's uh, that's funny. Um... So I don't know if I told you this, actually, uh, there was an interview with the guys that did days that made the game. Um, and they were talking about how there's no there's no motorcycles in Unreal. They had to take a four wheeled vehicle and make it into a motorcycle. And they did that by basically making two like two of the wheels invisible and just high above the bike. So it doesn't affect it. And I think it might actually be the reason you can drift with it so well without actually tipping over because it's got it's actually more like a, a T than it is like a, a line, but you just can't see it. Um, I find so many things wrong with that statement. <laughs> uh, There's never been a bike in Unreal and they had to jank a car. What kind of shit is that? Yeah, it was, um, or at least the Unreal version that they were using. And I don't know. I mean, that's just what they said in the uh, interview. And I, I have had a couple of crashes, as you saw there, but they're few and far between. And the game auto saves all the freaking time, to be quite frank with you. There was a couple of parts of the bikes, the bike I did like. I did like the fact that if you're the momentum carrying you down here, if you weren't accelerating, if your hand wasn't on the throttle, you weren't consuming fuel. Yeah, it works. You know, so even if you'd run out, you could glide down the mountainside really quite effectively. Yeah, and if you're out of fuel, uh, you can move the bike. You know, you can walk yeah. with the bike. It's not like it's completely stuck. So if you you're near a gas station or uh, a settlement, you can just wheel it in. Uh, actually, on the on the on the concept of fuel it's been about this game takes place two years after the big outbreak or a little a little less or a little more than two years and uh me and you almost immediately we're both like really there's like gas and materials and all this stuff literally like five minutes from this camp that don't make no sense this place should be bone dry yeah right it was everywhere and again that's where i think it's you got that choice between if they went fully realistic and you were spending the first 45 minutes trying to find a plank of wood and a, an ambulance for some meds yeah it's realistic but it takes away just from the fun factor right 
No doubt. So again, it's, it's sort of that the, 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 they didn't commit to either side. They didn't go full on realism to give you that immersion. They didn't go on full on gameplay just to make it crazy fun. So they sort of middle roaded it, and I think it's it sort of suffered for that a little bit. Yeah. Um, and there's not really any survival elements. You don't have to eat or drink or anything like that. I guess the closest thing would be fuel, fuel and repairing your bike. And like Smith said, that it's not difficult to find scrap. It's not difficult to find fuel. So it's not, I wouldn't even call it a survival game. It's just a third person action shooter really with a story and zombies. Um, I think the only time I had a, an issue with the bike mm -hmm. was the, um, just driving down the road, minding my own business. And then they stick this big wire across the road. Yes. Yes. Just completely takes I like me off those. my butt. That was great. Dude. I mm -hmm. thought that was absolutely fantastic. It was one of the only open world events I actually found enjoyable. Yeah. But I take you off your bike, your bike crashes. That's when you got to find the scraps. If you've got none, then it is a bit of a clamber that we need to get the scrap before the horde gets here. Mm -hmm. So there are a couple of bits where it does it, but it's very situation. Yeah, it depends completely on uh, where, where it happens and uh, what's going on. I've had it happen only twice in the game, so it's not a very common occurrence. Um, I've also had them like push a flaming car down onto me or try to hit me. It missed, but it exploded and called down a bunch of zombies. So uh, there is that. Um, all right, let's uh, let's move on to the thing that we dislike the most. And why don't you? Uh, well, here this. I'm going to start this because the footage is right freaking here. These motorcycle bounty hunting chases. You you're a bounty hunter in this game. Deacon's a bounty hunter, and sometimes you gotta collect a bounty by destroying a dude's bike you cannot kill them because apparently that's against the rules you can kill all of his buddies that's fine but if you i don't actually think you can even shoot the guys on the back of the bike i think you can only break their bike but for whatever reason in this world you can kill everybody else but these bounty targets are like no no you just got to take out the bike and then tie them up and leave them in the middle of nowhere because they're going to survive right they, oh some of this stuff First, i did after he was tied up, I tried to shoot him in the head. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, he's going to die anyway, so I'm going to do the humane thing and just put him out of his misery. He can't do anything. Wow. It, was, it was a straight... It's, the biking isn't great when you're trying to shoot people on no. the biking. Oh, this is not fun. You know, it's, it's auto-aim, so you just aim and shoot. You have to get close. That is auto-aim. That was smart. Because could you imagine? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the catch-up mechanic isn't 100%. Sometimes they will be ahead of you to the point of where you're not shooting for 30, 40 seconds. It's just, mm. it's just driving. You know, this isn't GTA. The driving isn't fun. You don't feel like a badass. No. And, and that really yeah, did irk so. me. Like how they could out, they could keep pace with me, but I had the level two nitro like that. How? Right. What do you mean? And it is literally that thing where you hit the nitro and you can see them like, no, this is, this is the distance they're keeping no matter what speed you do, unless you completely stop. Like you just cannot catch up to them. And that, yeah, it's, it's pretty scripted. You're not supposed to catch them until this particular point. Yeah, it's it's irritating. It's, it's commonplace, but it is very old school. You know, they, they could have done something a bit more, a bit more variety. But yeah, I'd, I'd done two of those missions and was like, no. Yeah, I've actually only done as many as I had to do. Um, what was the thing you most disliked about the game? So when you ask me what I liked the most, bang, because there was only one thing I really liked. There's a lot. I Tell didn't me like about the game. Um, I... I, probably the open world. Okay, that's fair. Could you uh, was, elaborate a bit? Go ahead. Uh, there was there was nothing going on, you know. Other than the, the, some of the pre-scripted missions are great. Some of the story bits were fantastic. But when you're just exploring, I think maybe again, this maybe this is an Ubisoft thing spoiling us. When you see that little question mark on your map, you get excited, right? Like, what's going on over there? I want to drive over here. I'm going to stop what I'm doing to go to this question mark. And I think 95 percent of the time, it's just a body on the floor. Yes. Or there's no animals. Yeah, you know, there's, there's never. There isn't enough of them going on. If, if they're just randomly scripted events, they definitely needed a lot more because I just got to the point I was ignoring them. Oh, it yeah. Was, it was always boring. It was just loot a body for some materials I was already full of. Exactly. You know, there was, there was one where I saw someone being held hostage and I thought, oh, this is exciting, but then a wolf came in and ate the hostage. <laughs> so I'm not sure what would have happened if I saved that poor hostage. But yeah, I think the, the open world's disappointing. I think the few parts I did enjoy was the interaction with the, the zombies, the freakers, whatever, and the, the enemy... NPCs that were running around. There was a sniper one time. It was on top of a mountain, and you can see the big red beam coming down to shoot you. Oh yeah, dude, you can see uh, those for a distance. Yeah, they can shoot you through walls and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, it's, there's a bunch it's, of. I them. think it's, it's designed to pin you down, so you've got to react to what's going on in your immediate environment. But it, it's just frustrating. But to watch him take a shot on me and then just get completely destroyed by a horde of zombies coming behind—that was great. But yeah, I think I ever went look at 
open world games, especially recent years, they're just so far ahead of what this game did. It, it really does show that there's a lot of, like, this game has been in development, I think it was like eight, nine years, something like that, and it does show there is a lot of old school stuff that it just isn't in games anymore, and I, I when I talked about what I disliked the most, I should have actually, because of what I saw on the screen, I should have actually mentioned that I hate the Nero missions. I like the Nero story, but I hate the Nero missions because they are pure stealth and they give you this bullshit reason. Like straight up, it says they are immune to damage. What? They have hazmat suits on. My knife, my bat, my bullets, my fire, my explosion, my bike running them over. They're immune to literally everything. So why are the freakers winning? Because apparently these guys are just invincible. And, and I know that it's like, that's why I say this game has been in development for a long time. Again, I'm going to go back to Black Flag. They had these missions. And that was at the turn of the generation. Uh, I don't even remember anymore. 2012, 13, something like that. And, a long time ago. Right. Yeah. And that was one of our chief complaints about Black Flag was those missions. And now Ubisoft, there's maybe a few stealth missions every now and then, but they're super rare. And if you kill the target a lot of the times, it's kind of like, okay, whatever. No big deal. This, on the other hand... I literally got done to listening to their conversation and I was like, all right, I got to escape. No big deal. I have two big issues with the escape. First and foremost, you can watch these Nero guys in hazmat suits go to the helicopter and they just sit by the helicopter. They don't get in. They just sit by the helicopter. It's like, okay, whatever. Second, if you get caught on the escape, it puts you back to having to follow the Nero researcher again. And, oh, Ooh, I, I, I had to do it like three times. I'll be real with you. I almost quit right there because you just get so like, I don't want to hear this again. You know what I mean? It's just, you're not paying attention. You just Is it forcing the player down a tunnel narrative. You know, I want to hear what they want to say because uh, I don't know if we explained it. Nero are basically the, the scientific sort of government black shady guys that are going around checking shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of more in depth story to it, but I don't want to mention too many spoilers, but I, I really enjoyed every situation with them because of the, Sort of the gritty side of it, the dark side of it, every all the questions that were popping up all the time, fantastic. But I don't want to have to spend 15 minutes hiding in the bush first. No, and it's not just no. those missions. There, there are other missions where you have to do it as well. Stealth, it's not a major part of the game. It is a major part of the game if you want to play that way. But it's, ah, I would say probably about 15% of the missions or so, you have to stealth for certain things. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's not fun. Because... It works. If I'm, if I'm stealthing up behind a zombie and I'm gutting him in the back of the head... Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm lowering the numbers. That's fine. I'm getting an immediate reward for my stealth. For that few seconds yes. of patience, I got to kill somebody. Right. And this is just like, you know, hiding a bush across the stream, hiding a bush, hide behind a tree, hide in a bush, get caught, restart. Yeah, I, I completely agree. They were really, really annoying. For the, for the story they were introducing to the game, they really took it out of it with those piss poor mechanics. And the Nero missions aren't the only story missions I liked. There's, there's a couple other ones I liked as well, but the... There's a lot of them I don't like, and you are forced to play them in in an order that they choose for the most part. Like if you beat everything else and then you have, let's say, a Nero mission left, you have to beat that Nero mission to get the rest of the story missions. It's like, oh, come on. Why? Why would you do this to me? What if I don't care about the Nero missions? And it's like, well, Deacon cares about it. And it's like, I, well, I get that, but I don't. I don't want to. I do. I want to hear what they're talking about. I like all this sciencey stuff they're going over, but... I don't want to go through one of those missions again. So it's, it's just a, it's got pacing issues. I would say a lot of pacing issues. Yeah. And you do spend a lot of time on the road. So it's like, ugh. um, all right. Uh, this, we mentioned me and Smith had a conversation right before we started that I was like, we're probably going to go for like 30 minutes and we're at 29 minutes right now. And I ain't even close to being where I thought I was going to be. So we're going to go ahead and switch it up real quick to, uh, you think there's going to be a sequel? Yes. All right. I, I agree. I think there's going to be, especially considering how much time they had to put into the getting this first one out. I believe there's going to be a sequel. Um, and, I mean, oh, go ahead. a lot of it's there. You know, the characters, mm -hmm. they're solid. You know, I mean, Deacon, I do actually quite like um, the Boozer guy, too. I mean, you know, they're, they're not, you know, they're not going to win Oscars, but they're, they're fleshed out enough to be worth investigating further for sure. Yeah. You know, it's, a, it's a console exclusive. It's got zombies. It's going to sell. So, I mean, I'd be very surprised if we didn't see a sequel. Whether it's going to be the next 10 years or not, I don't know. But 
Uh, yeah, sales sales have been pretty good from what I've read, uh, matching that of uh, Mortal Kombat 11 on uh, the PlayStation 4. Um, now that that's physical sales, so that's you know take that with a grain of salt. If I was a Mortal Kombat guy, I'd probably play it digitally. But um, the sales are there. Obviously, I don't know what Sony's expectations are or Ben's expectations are, but this game has been in development forever, so I, I'd have to say they're pretty freaking high. Um, and I do like Deacon quite a bit. He's got this weird like almost like a screw loose when you're fighting with him. Sometimes he'll like talk to himself like, oh yeah, you like that? Yeah. How do you like being ambushed, huh? How do you like having your skin ripped off and you know, stuff like that. He really does hate these things. But when you interact with like uh, camp people and stuff like that, that he's, he's just normal chill dude. You know, he's a, he's kind of an asshole from time to time, but he can be nice. And he doesn't, it doesn't seem like he has a screw loose there. It's kind of like, I, I would have preferred if he kind of had that like, wild card factor type of deal like he's talking to someone and he just fucking flips out of nowhere but now nah, it's not nothing like that so far anyways has really happened so um they could probably explore that a little bit more i the thing about a biker gang is they normally travel in packs so i would not be opposed to a co-op uh in the sequel absolutely um maybe mm, again i haven't beat it so i don't know what happens I don't know if Deacon, you know, dies or yeah, something like that. Yeah, the end of the game, right. die. <laughs> so I was like, I, like I, I wouldn't mind playing Deacon again, but there are other characters in the game, um, assuming they choose to use this area again, they could completely go somewhere else, uh, that are interesting enough and, you know, friendly enough with Deacon that I feel like you could make it realistically, if you're using Deacon in the same area again, you could have a partner, uh, a co-op partner, no problem. Um, and... The, I know why they didn't do it. They, it just takes a lot to put it in. But the other big thing here, we should have mentioned this actually earlier. This game chugs. There are some bad frame drops. And I'm on PS Pro. So Smith. There, ooh. It, like when you're riding through the forest sometimes, it's mm, like, I, I don't want to say Superman 64 level, but it can get, it can get like, I would almost say 10 frames. It's really bad. It's never happened to me into a fight, thankfully, but you notice it when you go through, especially those tall tree areas. I, I say it's only happened to me in, in, in dense, dense wooded areas. It's only been maybe two or three times for a few seconds. So like, it shouldn't be happening on a PS4 Pro in a first party game, no, but absolutely, not. It, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't make, it didn't happen enough to sort of end my experience at all. It's funny, actually. I don't think it's ever happened when. Uh... A horde was coming after me just when I was just driving through places. It must be like when the area is trying to load type of thing might be it. Um, but yeah, yeah, I had no issues. Never, not a single frame drop. Just regardless of how many zombies are on the screen, mm -hmm. flawless there. It was just when I'm out in the sticks. So yeah, it's a bit odd. All right. Anything else you want to hit on before we uh, do the last topic here as we uh, wrap this up? No, no. I think that's covered most of the stuff I wanted to chat about. All right. So Metacritic reviews are all over the place do you what is what what would you if you i know you're not reviewing it but you are a reviewer what would you give it as a score right now without without beating it without seeing everything i know i know it's like oh he hasn't beat it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i know all right we're, we're just playing a game here what what's the score you'd give it all right let me just let me just say first right for me a five is average okay yes. it doesn't mean it's a bad game it's an average game that means you'll spend 60 bucks and you'll be like yeah it's all right you know, right. so don't shoot me for this i would i would go for a six right and i think that's right about the, i think i think it's a high like if we were to uh, do it 6.5 it's a high six it could be a seven very easily could be a seven if they fixed a few things and uh, added a few things but it is a very average game with some pleasant experiences i would say and there's obviously quite a bit wrong with it as well but it's not completely broken and i've seen I think the highest score I saw was a 90, 95, something like that. And I think you pointed out to me that someone gave it a three, which is just, whoa, that's, that's at that point, maybe you're just saying it's three to have the lowest score on Metacritic. Cause that, it's not a three, like straight and up. I, I would defend any reviewers rights just to say, you know, you, you review the game you play and your experience, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But like you, you can hate a game, but you can still say like Apex, for example, hate it. But it's a great game. Yeah, you know, you you can look at it from from a subjective point of view. Be like, okay, this, I don't like this game at all, but it's really good. And I didn't like Days Gone. It's not my kind of game, to be honest. That's what I was missing, but it was still, it's not a three. There's no yeah. no justification for that at all. 
And I'm with you. I'm on the, uh, this is where I, I like I said, 6.5. I'd be on the, I would just need one or two things to push me to a seven or one or two bad things to push me to the pure six. So, and uh, our website only goes on uh, the single point scale. So we go six, seven, eight. So we don't have a, a 6.5. Um, there is, you know, there's a lot, there's enough to like here that if you like zombie games, especially, I, I do think it is worth picking up. There are a lot of zombies to kill, a lot of ways to kill them. You will have to tolerate some not so fun segments, especially when it comes to stealth, but. Better than War Z, I'll tell you that much. Yes, I would uh, totally agree with that. Although World War Z is co op, and apparently everyone outside of us thinks it's amazing and left for dead three even though it's nothing like left for dead. that's a, that's a conversation for a different video though <laughs> because we're if we if we get into this it's going to be a long one so all right so yeah that's uh that's me and smith just talking about you know casually talking about days gone um like i said if you like zombie games probably worth giving it a shot i wouldn't be surprised actually if it went on sale like right after e3 so it might be worth waiting for that um, but yeah that will uh do it for us um, I'm not sure what the next video we're going to be doing. Normally I'll have a schedule and as I'm looking up, maybe Rage 2. That's probably the next one we'll do because that's the next yeah. video. Yeah. yeah, and Smith is obviously already kind of eh on Rage 2. Yeah. I'm, I'm not having any expectations because I did not enjoy the first Rage very much and I don't want to have expectations for it. But yes, look forward to that once we at least put a couple days into it. So we'll see what happens. I will uh, probably post something in our discord which will be linked below if you wish to join our discord and uh you know chat shit with us along with our twitter and all that stuff down below um yeah any final words or anything like that smith or shall you just say goodbye and i will wrap this up if you like what you saw oh, i was gonna do your thing at the end you want to do it you want to do it you want to finish it i don't know what it is what is it if you like what you saw you got what you needed like comment subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah. Later, Gators.